Hello everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depending upon when you are listening to this audio lecture. So far, we have discussed about some of the basic concepts related to the income tax. After understanding the overall syllabus structure of this paper, I hope all of you have followed the contents of the discussion so far, which included distinction between tax, duty, and cess. Difference between law and act. What are the differences between direct taxes and indirect taxes? Like this, certain terminology has been explained, and also one of the very important aspects to note and remember and apply always: the difference between taxability and tax liability. Of course, right now, with what we have learned, we don't know whether something is taxable or not. That is what. we need to learn as a process of understanding the subject of income tax we don't even know how to compute the tax liability once we know the total income of the ssc both of them are not just some points just to be noted that itself is income tax having said that still we need to be very clear about the terms taxability arises according to the provisions of the income tax act whether an income is taxable or not s yes or no tax liability is a word which represents the amount of money that is payable or receivable by an ssc to or from the government let us forget about the receivable part refund part just nothing but negative amount of tax liability simply speaking under normal circumstances tax liability indicates the amount payable by the ssc to the government that is tax liability how much the ssc has responsibility of paying income tax to the government that is an amount that is a number it is not a sir no so tax liability is a calculation of course we will come to that in the coming classes but at every juncture we need to be very clear about these two terms taxability is different from tax liability and also we try to understand whether a particular item is taxable or not is not something that we can imagine is not something that we can one way we can say create it has to be mentioned in the income tax act so our whims and fancies will not have much of importance when it comes to the legal subjects like taxation so if any question comes as to certain amount is taxable or not the only answer where we can get is from the income tax act 1961 itself this important aspect also hopefully all of you would have understood in addition to that we discussed about the components of the income tax law in india and we already discussed about law is a broader term act is only a part of that in continuation of that discussion we have identified different components of income tax law in india which included income tax act 1961 income tax rules 1962 annual finance acts and circulars and notifications by central government or cbdt and the judgments given by courts namely high court and supreme court so all these things put together are called income tax law in india <clears throat> and all of them are binding on the ssc's of course when there is a clash between one of these things and other thing that is where only the issue comes should this be followed or that be followed that litigation will always be there related to many items but the answer for all that litigation generally will be explained by supreme court of india and naturally as the name indicates whatever supreme court says that is supreme that becomes final and binding on the entire country if there is a contradiction between a judgment given by one high court and another high court then it will stay like a gray area for some period of time some of the people might use one judgment the other people might use another judgment it will be a gray area for some at some time some period of time later the same will be clarified by either supreme court or by the government itself by making an amendment to the act so all those practical things of how these actual items of income tax act rules circulars judgments finance act how they will really apply how they are dynamic they are so dynamic all those things we don't need to track that is generally the job of a practicing chartered accountant who has a high amount of direct taxation practice that to at a higher level of clients for us 
what is our scope as far as ca intermediate is concerned majorly our scope is to know the contents of the income tax act that too limited to computation of total income and tax liability of ssc's that's all judicial pronouncements very few will be discussed by us in final there will be more of them circulars and notifications as and when they are relevant will be discussed by us same with rules of income tax if they are relevant for our computations they will be discussed otherwise in general almost 80 to 90% of our focus will be on the income tax act 1961 so we are mostly sticking to what has been written in black and white in the act of 1961 so the gray areas will be there in reality but again as i said earlier if we are more interested in gray areas we will stay there only our major focus will get deviated so gray areas we will just go there and come back if at all there is any gray area we just touch that and that should not be our main focus our focus should be on mostly understanding of the act interpretation of the provisions of the act applying the provisions of the act and finally by applying the provisions of the act trying to be able to solve the problems the numerical questions that have been given to us that should be our major focus gray areas naturally being a subject of litigation <clears throat> a high amount of litigation will be existing in income tax there will be tremendous amount of gray areas in real life and my sincere suggestion is better not to be interested in gray areas because they are naturally interesting is a common human psychology if somebody says you don't go there naturally we all say are i will go and see what is there that is how usual human psychology works nothing wrong with that but we need to have a control on that that's what i mean to say we should not let our brain always take us to the gray areas the areas where there is no clarity where there is no light which are contradictory sometimes litigating no 100% clarification is still there such areas will be very few and those areas can be ignored at this level ca intermediate level if at all we discuss them it is only for academic interest not really that they are all very helpful in the examination in the examination what is going to be helpful is definitely the learning of income tax act provisions of the income tax act 1961 and our process of learning as we discussed earlier in the syllabus is nothing but the same as the process of computation of total income what steps it will have first of all we need to determine the residential status of an ssc that is the first step then once we have the residential status of the ssc according to the residential status we will come to know whether we have we means india has any kind of control or any kind of purview on the incomes earned by the ssc's that's what we call tax incidence why residential status becomes important logically if you understand imagine somebody earning income in germany and spending it in london he is he is a french national how do we tax him as indian income tax act quite not possible they are completely outside our purview of the income tax act that's only an example let me once again and again and again i will warn you don't take examples as the law examples are examples only beneficial for understanding the provisions of the law if you take examples as equivalent to law that is going to be very dangerous particularly in income tax examples should never be taken as the provisions of the law they are only useful in and useful in understanding what is the stand of the law now the example is completely about a person who has nothing to do with india so how can india tax them how can india have any purview on the income earned by such person answer is no any common sensical person will tell it is not possible sir that's what residential status also will tell is one of the cases like this different types of residential status will be there what is the purpose of that determination of residential status once again s or no taxability whether a particular income earned by a particular ssc is taxable in india or not s or no that will be determined by residential status of an ssc and that is the first step because if a particular income is not even coming under the purview of the indian income tax act there is no point of computing it why should we compute something which we don't have any purview upon that is why first we have to check the purview that is what is called as 
determination of residential status and tax incidence. Once a person or an SSC comes into the purview of Indian Income Tax Act, then we will have to compute his income according to the heads of incomes, whether it is earned by salaries or is it income from house property or is it a profit or gains of business or profession or is it through capital gains. If not all the four, is it something that is not falling in any of the categories, then we call it income from other sources. So heads of income have to be determined, all of them to be totaled and if any exemptions are to be given according to the eligibility of the SSE, they have to be given and then we have to compute basically what is the income of the SSE by adding up all the incomes individually calculated with heads of incomes provisions. After that, it will not be enough if there are any provisions applicable for the SSE in relation to clubbing, then clubbing provisions have to be applied. If there are any provisions related to set off and carry forward of losses, that will be applicable only when there are losses. If there is any such facility which can be availed by the SSE, that should be applied. Then what we get is called gross total income. After calculating the gross total income, deductions have to be given under section you need to remember these sections, some of them important ones, section 80, 80. And that is what we also call chapter 6A deductions. After allowing those deductions from the gross total income, what the SSE is, has computed is his total income, which can be called also, just for understanding purposes, taxable income, taxable income. That is a taxable income on which tax liability has to be calculated in accordance with the rates which are prescribed in the annual finance act. So that is the procedure overall for computation of total income and tax liability. This is what is the summary of whatever we have understood and discussed so far. Now let us continue the discussion with some of the more important terms or even definitions which are very important in the purpose of understanding the Income Tax Act. So, one of such words, terminology is the concept of assessment year and previous year. See, normally for a layman, year is an year. Year normally we divide into two categories. One is calendar year. Calendar year generally starts. We are talking about English calendar. We are not talking about any of our Indian traditional calendars. There are different hundred types of calendars. We are not talking about any of them. They may be helpful for religious ritual purposes, but definitely not standardized throughout the world. So we are only talking about English calendar, which is the calendar year starting from January to December. In India particularly, we have some other year called as financial year. In India so far, it is ranging from 1st April to 31st March of next year. So we have a calendar year and financial year. Now the question comes, which kind of year the Income Tax Act is talking about is income tax act of India considering a calendar year as an year or is it considering financial year as an year the answer is the second one income tax act considers financial year as an year so for the purpose of income tax act whenever we say year we cannot call with one number if somebody says 2018 that is wrong in income tax wherever we refer to a year it cannot be one number. 2018 is not enough. It could be 1718 or 1819. What does 1718 mean? 1718 means 2017 April to 2018 March. What does 1819 mean? 2018 April to 2019 March. So the year which is referred in the Income Tax Act is always a financial year starting from 1st April of one year to 31st March of next year. That has to be always kept in mind whenever we talk about an year. But now the question comes, what is this previous year and assessment year? Basically, assessment year is the year which has been particularly defined in section 2, subsection 9. You don't need to remember these sections. Section 2, which is a definition section, need not be remembered separately, not required. So don't worry about it. So it is uh, section 2, 9 defines the assessment year as the period of 12 months commencing on 1st April every year. That's all. So assessment year has been just defined as one year starting from 1st April of every year. So 12 months from 1st April will naturally be the ending on 31st March of next year. And the year in which 
income is earned is not assessment year that is called as previous year and such income is taxable in the immediately following year which is the assessment year that means for example if you take the applicable years that we are talking about for your examination also what is the applicable assessment year for your examination is 2020-21 and naturally the previous year during which the income has been earned is 2019-20 now understand this very carefully when the income is being earned that is being earned in 2019-20 and when the amount is going to be taxable that is going to be happening in 2021 so now simply to conclude income earned in the previous year 2019-20 is taxable in the assessment year 2020-21. So, one point just to note and always keep in mind, assessment year is only a concept. It is only an abstract term. It is not that really important in reality. But it is very important term wherever we use the calculations, we use the word assessment year only. It is important from Income Tax Act point of view. But, in reality, is there anything called as assessment year? There is nothing called as assessment year. In reality, there is year. What is that year during which the income is actually earned? What is the reality? That is previous year. So, the year in which the income is really earned on the ground in reality is previous year. Then what is assessment year? We can simply say the next year of the previous year. Either way it can be told. But whatever the law says, we are talking about definitions. But ultimately, both are same. Let us say, a is sitting in front of B. Okay. That is one statement. And B is sitting behind A. Is another statement. Both are true. But if the law says one statement, we are just reading that. Both are true. So there is no additional thing that we need to understand here. Simply speaking, every financial year is a previous year. Whenever the income is earned by a person during a financial year, that year is previous year. And... Whatever the income that is earned during the previous year will be taxable in the next year. And for our convenience purposes, what name we give to that next year? That we call it assessment year. And what is the assessment year applicable for our examination in November 2020? That is 2020-21 assessment year. And what is the previous year naturally in relation to the income of which this assessment year is applicable? That is 2019-20. So, the incomes of all the persons that we are going to calculate in future, our SSCs, our clients, let us say, uh, each problem, we have to consider as if it is our client. And they are coming to us for a solution, we have to give some solution. If we consider like that, it will be easier to understand also and we will be careful also. So, imagine all the cases that we are going to solve in future, when the income will be earned by them. If income is earned in 1980-82, we don't care. That is none of our business. Naturally, all the questions that we are going to encounter will have the SSEs who have earned their income in the year 2019-20. In other words, just to be very specific, the income by our SSEs would have been earned between 1st April 2019 to 31st March 2020. That's all. During this period of 12 months, Whatever income has been earned by anybody under whatever head of income, according to the provisions of Income Tax Act, we need to compute all of that and that becomes taxable in the assessment year 2020-21. Once again, previous year is reality, that is when the income is really earned. Assessment year is only an abstract concept that has been given by the Income Tax Act. So that is only a technical name of assessment year 2020-21 is just a name of 12 months related to the next year after which the income has been already earned. So simply speaking, all of this will summarize to only one thing. Previous year is the year preceding the assessment year and assessment year is the year succeeding the previous year. So A is sitting in front of B, B is sitting behind A. Simple, both are giving the same meaning. But we need to be very clear about what is what? What is reality? When the income is earned? Income is earned during previous year. That is a point to be noted. Another point to be noted here is assessment year always starts from 1st April and it is always a period of 12 months. Then again a question comes, why is it talked about only assessment year? There is a old joke. 
once a minister went to a king and said that sir your second wife is most generous person i have ever seen she is a, a fantastic human being what does it mean automatically it means the first wife is first wife of the king is not so generous so when somebody says this is what is excellent when there are only two things actually the other thing is not that excellent as the other thing so that is the inference that we have to draw so now this statement give tells us assessment year is always a period of 12 months and always it starts from 1st april only so automatically what will it imply the law always will not be 100% vocal about everything it will not tell us everything we need to read sometimes between the lines so here the law says assessment year always starts from 1st april and it is always a period of 12 months naturally what we have to understand and imply from that that means previous year need not start from 1st april always also that means previous year though it is a name of called as year it need not be 12 months it could be less than 12 months also but in no case previous year can be more than 12 months not possible previous year can never be more than 12 months can it be less than 12 months answer is yes when is that we will come to that later so before going to that discussion first of all we should be very clear about the definitions of previous year and assessment year assessment year is defined in the law in the act by section 2 subsection 9 which is defined like assessment year is a period of 12 months commencing on 1st april every year dot that is the definition now what is the definition of previous year defined by income tax act that has been defined under section 3 once again i am telling you this section you don't have to remember any section you have to remember i will tell what is required to be remembered if some of you say are i will remember sir please do that don't worry about it if you can remember you remember every section of the income tax act i don't have any issue with that but i am only talking about somebody who cannot remember all the sections that is waste of memory if we try to remember everything so at least we try to remember only the important sections so these definition sections numbers are not important concept is important the by hearting of the wording is not important but what is the meaning of this definition we should understand that is more important so once again focus on the essence rather than on the form so here previous year is defined in section 3 which means the financial year immediately preceding the assessment year they did not define anything they just said financial year immediately preceding the assessment year they said assessment year is already defined as a 12 months period starting from 1st april of every year so assessment year is always a 12 months period since it is de clearly defined so the word used is 12 months period but when it comes to previous year there is no word called as 12 months period the word used there is financial year immediately preceding the previous year preceding the assessment year that becomes previous year so as mentioned earlier the income earned during the previous year is taxable in the assessment year now while i am talking about this assessment year previous year you should go through the image that has been sent to you which was taken from the isa study material in relation to the definition of assessment year and previous year that is assessment year and previous year simply speaking assessment year is a 12 months period starting from 1st april of every year and previous year is a financial year which is preceding the assessment year and assessment year will always be a period of 12 months previous year need not be a period of 12 months now the question comes sir how is it possible that previous year uh, cannot be a period of 12 months can it be more than 12 months answer is outright no can it be less than 12 months answer is possible which is one previous year we are talking when previous year can be less than 12 months for this you have to go to the next image which has been sent to you imagine a new business has been set up or a new profession has been set up during the financial year if any business is already existing then previous year also will be a period of 12 months imagine if a business has been set up somewhere in the middle of the year then how can we say the previous year is a period of 12 months not possible that is why in that case previous year can be a period which is less than 12 months so in such a case where the business or profession is newly set up during the financial year the previous year shall be the period beginning on the date of setting up of the business or profession and ending with 31st march of the said financial year take some examples for understanding imagine somebody started a business on 1st july 2019 then what is the previous year for that ssc 
it is 1st july 2019 to 31st march 2020 is it 12 months answer is no for that ssc the previous year is consisting of only 9 months take another example say somebody started a profession somebody qualified chartered accountancy and started practice say in february 2020 so for that particular person is the period of 12 months a previous year answer is once again no because the profession has been started in february for that particular professional whatever the previous year will be it is only for period of 2 months that is february and march so naturally this can lead us to a conclusion where we can say previous year need not be a period of 12 months it can be less than that also it is quite possible when is that not always when a business or profession is newly set up during the financial year then the previous year can be less than 12 months period as well that is for business or profession somebody may say no sir i don't have business or profession but my source of income started exist coming into existence somewhere in the middle of the year but then also it is same you don't have to be too technical about it business or profession is one source of income there could be some other source of income also whatever the source of income may be if any source of income comes into existence in the said financial year then the previous year will commence from the date on which the source of income newly comes into existence and it will end with the 31st march of the financial year so business or profession is one example then it has been broadened to any source of income if any source of income has come into existence let us say first time somebody got a salary somebody got a job after completing education somebody joined an employment with some employer say on 1st of november 2019 for for that person a new source of income has come into existence only in november we cannot say for him the previous year is a period of 12 months for him the previous year will be only for a period of 5 months november december january february march only 5 months is previous year for that person since a new source of income has come into existence in the middle of the year if for an existing ssc always previous year will be for a period of 12 months for somebody who has a new business or profession set up or a new source of income comes into existence for such people the the previous year will be for a period of less than 12 months could be less than 12 months if imagine somebody started business on 1st april of 2019 okay no problem even in that case the previous year will be for a period of 12 months so if somebody starts business in somewhere in the middle of the year then the previous year could be a period of less than 12 months that is the concept of a shorter previous year but once again always to keep in mind assessment year can never be less than 12 months it is only an abstract concept of an year in that abstract concept assessment year is always a full 12 months period uh, which is following which is succeeding the previous year so assessment year is not the year in which the income is earned assessment year is not reality assessment year is only the concept which has been coined by income tax act previous year is also a concept or a, or, or a term which is coined by income tax act but at least previous year has some reality on the ground it is the year in which the income has actually been earned so any month sudden let us say somebody has earned some income in uh, say february 2020 we can easily say which previous year it has been earned if somebody earned an income in february 2020 which previous year will that be previous year of 2019 20 naturally in which assessment year such income will be taxable assessment year 2020 21 like that during a year which is previous year income will be earned and the next year is the year assessment year in which the income becomes taxable however sometimes the previous year can be a period of less than 12 months period whereas previous year can never be more than 12 months assessment year is always a period of 12 months it cannot be less than 12 months it cannot be more than 12 months it is only an abstract concept of an year which has been which has been told by income tax act that is a concept very important aspect of assessment year and previous year take the examples which have been just given similar examples we took already just for understanding continue with examples which have been given in the material for example a is running business from 1993 onwards what is the previous year 
for the assessment year 2020-21 because he has been already running the business he has an existing business for him the previous year will be naturally a full year which is 1-4-2019 to 31st March 2020 that is 1920 that is what is previous year for Mr. A is that clear why is it full 12 months since it is already an existing business not a new business now go to the second example a chartered accountant sets up his profession on 1st July 2019 and determine the previous year for the assessment year 2020-21 now can we say previous year is 1920 just like that starting from April 2019 to ending on 20, uh, 31st March 2020 is that possible no we cannot say that because the previous year does not start in this case from 1st April rather it starts from the day on which the profession has been set up which is 1st July 2019 means what for this particular person the previous year will not be for a period of 12 months it will be for a period of only 9 months ranging from 1st July 2019 to 31st March 2020 that is the concept of previous year and assessment year and after some time I will send you one file which will ask you to calculate what or, or determine there is nothing calculation there to determine what is the previous year for a particular income which is earned on a particular day or month which I will send you all that you need to do is you need to identify what is the previous year for such income and what is the assessment year for such income which has been earned I will send that file later and that will be your task related to this previous year assessment year and let me mind you remind you this concept of months is very important particularly in the previous year scenario which month of the year uh, is falling under which previous year you have to be very careful simply from April to December and January to March of the next year will fall in the previous year so for example if 2019 March somebody says 2019 March will fall in the previous year of 2018-19 but 2020 March will fall in the previous year of 2019-20 that is why the month date may not be that relevant month and year this calendar uh, skills are required these are generally taught at second or third standard so those skills have to be used now I will send a file to you after some time wherein I will give you when the income has been earned month and year what you will determine is what is the previous year for such income what is the assessment year for such income after this task is done then we will move on to another discussion of exceptions to this general rule of previous year and assessment year that is only a theory question not much useful for any of our calculations or examination problems but still very very frequently that has been asked in examinations as a theory question so far the theory questions which have been asked in the examination are one what are the components of the income tax law in India that was asked earlier in the examinations also two what is the procedure for computation of total income that has been asked in the previous examinations also definition of assessment year previous year is also quite possible but generally it's a rare pheno rare phenomenon uh, but majorly MCQs can be expected from the concept of newly startup business for example one examination the question was asked like this business has been set up on 31st March 2020 now the question comes what is the previous year for that person who started business on 31st March 2020 that's a dilemma there should not be any dilemma in that simple point whatever the period may be the previous year year name is previous year and what is the real period for that person one day and what is the previous year for him 31st March 2020 to 31st March 2020 means effectively for a period of one day also can be called as a previous year so we should not have any other thoughts when the law is very clear about certain things uh, how can it be one day uh, year now they are telling all these questions will not have any validity why because when the law is giving a permission that previous year can be less than 12 months it can be less than 12 months anything is okay 12 months less is one day less than 12 months yes 
Is it allowed by law? Yes. So there is no problem. So 31st March 2020 to 31st March 2020 also can be called as a previous year. Though the name is previous year, it may not constitute a year. However, for that income which has been earned on 31st March of 2020, the day on which the business has been set up, that income will be taxable in the assessment year 2020-21. So always the general rule is what? Income earned in the previous year will be subjected to tax in assessment year. That is a general rule which we already discussed. In the next session of audio lecture, what we will discuss is the exceptions to the general rule. Means under what circumstances this rule is not applied. In other words, income of the previous year is taxable in previous year itself. We will not wait till assessment year. When will be that? What are the exceptions to that general rule? We will discuss in the next session by talking about exceptions. And also we will discuss some more definitions under the Income Tax Act which are important, which are useful for our understanding of the Income Tax Act. That we will continue in the next session. Till then, I'll take leave. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay home. Stay safe. Thank you very much.